friends so in our previous classes we have discussed about different systems we have seen the gastrointestinal system and nervous system we have seen and today we are going to discuss about the circulatory system okay so in the circulatory system we are going to discuss about the heart and as well as the different types of circulation we are going to discuss okay so it is also called as vascular system let me explain you this vascular system so this circulatory system or vascular system is a transport system of the body through which nutrients are conveyed to places where they are utilized and the metabolites are conveyed to appropriate places from where they are excreted okay so the, the conveying medium is a liquid state the blood okay which flows in the tubular channels called as blood vessels remember in the circulatory system the blood is flowing in the blood vessels okay blindly can remember blood is going through the blood going through the blood vessels and reach into the every part of the body and the circulation is maintained by a pumping organ called as heart okay then a five liters of blood is contained in the vascular system five liters of the blood then what are the components of vascular system what are the parts heart arteries veins capillaries okay heart arteries veins capillaries let me explain you the heart how the heart is present okay so coming to this heart so heart is a complicated spiral three dimensions three dimensional organization it is situated in the mediastinum of thoracic cavity means between in the thoracic cage means in the rib cage how many ribs are there 12 pairs of ribs in that thoracic cage the heart is present and the heart is covered by a layer called as pericardium heart is covered by the layer called as pericardium now it is somewhat pyramidal in shape what is the shape of it it is a pyramidal in shape and is placed obliquely behind the sternum the flat bone which is present in the chest anteriorly that flat bone is called as sternum behind the sternum which the heart is present adjoining parts of the coastal cartilages so that one third of the heart is to the right of the median plane and two thirds of the heart is projecting towards the left side okay, let me show you that so here we can identify the heart so one third part is present towards the right side rest of the two third two thirds part is present towards the left side okay this is the heart wall which we can identify the next thing the heart is a hollow muscular organ so as i told you earlier it is a hollow muscular organ pyramidal in shape and what is the layer covering this covering the heart is called as pericardium pericardium and it is connected to the base uh, it is connected at its base with the great blood vessels but otherwise lies free within the pericardium okay so all the blood vessels which we can identify over here these are all the blood vessels some vessels are opening into it and some vessels which are emerging outside it this red color one red color vessel which is emerging coming outside from it whereas this blue color one these are the veins which opens into it opens into it okay so that is about the heart then coming to the external features what are the external features the external features of the heart it is having an apex okay so apex is present at the lower part towards the left side at the fourth coastal uh, fourth intercostal space we can identify this apex and the base which is present behind it okay this part is forming the base okay and here it is forming apex and posteriorly here it is forming the base and it is having the borders right border left side border inferior border superior border following so remember four borders right side border left side border inferior border superior border and the features of the features apex base then the surfaces are anterior surface this anterior surface it is also called as sternocostal surface sternocostal surface it is related to the sternum the flat bone that's why it is called as sternocostal surface and other surface is the diaphragmatic surface diaphragmatic surface means which is resting on the diaphragm muscle 
which is what is the diaphragm diaphragm is a muscle which is separating thoracic cavity and the abdominal cavity so on that diaphragm muscle the diaphragmatic surface of the heart which is resting on it okay that is about anterior view on the posterior view what the what we can identify the posterior view we can identify some vessels are opening into it these are the vessels called as pulmonary veins they are opening into the left atrium of the heart okay so that is about the anterior surface and posterior surface diaphragmatic surface apex and base okay then coming to the frontal section if we just take a section of the heart what we can do we can see interior of the heart so we can identify two atria okay two atria atrial uh, atria are the chambers okay atria are the chambers and then ventricles ventricles are also the chambers there are four chambers are there in the heart two atria two ventricles right and left atria right and left ventricle okay so that is about the interior of the heart okay so just wait for a while i will show you another slide yes coming to the other features of the heart what we can identify other features are so let me show you this so this right atrium we can identify a big vessel which is opening into it this one is called as superior vena cava superior vena cava which is bringing the carbon dioxide blood or deoxygenated blood deoxygenated blood from the head neck and the upper lips okay then inferior vena cava this is inferior vena cava which is bringing the deoxygenated blood means carbon dioxide blood from the abdomen lower limbs and the pelvis regions from all these different regions this inferior vena cava bringing the carbon dioxide blood or deoxygenated blood and opens into this right atrium so here we can identify one opening that is opening of superior vena cava here we can identify another opening called as opening of inferior vena cava so what these vessels are bringing carbon dioxide blood they are bringing and they drains into this chamber called as right atrium from the right atrium from the right atrium the carbon dioxide blood enters into another chamber called as right ventricle right ventricle so now the carbon dioxide blood reached to the right ventricle so from the right ventricle it is opening into a trunk called as pulmonary trunk pulmonary trunk so carbon dioxide blood enters into the pulmonary trunk and it divides this pulmonary trunk it is going to divide into right sorry here right and left pulmonary arteries pulmonary trunk it is going to divide into right and left pulmonary arteries so the carbon dioxide blood reached to the right ventricle then it enters into the pulmonary trunk and divides into right and left pulmonary arteries and reaches to the lungs and reaches to the lungs then what happens in the lungs in the lungs gases exchange you try to listen carefully gases exchange carbon dioxide is a gas oxygen is a gas so gases exchange so through air through air we are inspiring the air oxygen and that oxygen reach to the lungs that oxygen enters into the blood the carbon dioxide enters into the the air expired air expired air so carbon dioxide is coming out through the nose and the inspired air means the air the oxygen which you take through the nose that oxygen enters into the blood and that oxygen blood reached to the left atrium through this vessels these pulmonary veins right and left pulmonary veins there are two pairs of pulmonary veins are there right and left pulmonary veins they are bringing the oxygen blood and reach to the left atrium of the heart okay then from the left atrium it enters into left ventricle left ventricle then from the left ventricle the oxygen blood enters into a big vessel called as aorta big vessel called as aorta so aorta it is giving it is going to divide into different branches and it gives different branches through that it reaches to all parts of the body this is the procedure okay so here you can identify one type of circulation one type of circulation the carbon dioxide blood reaching to the lungs 
again oxygen blood entering into the heart so this type of circulation is called as pulmonary circulation pulmonary circulation and the oxygen blood it is reaching to the all parts of the body through this iota and its branches okay that is called as systemic circulation systemic circulation you don't worry i will explain you slowly okay then coming to this heart what are other features we can identify already i have told you about this surface called as anterior or sternocostal surface and the inferior surface it is also called as diaphragmatic surface diaphragmatic surface so which is uh, formed by right atrium and atrioventricular groove and both ventricles we can identify so these are the chambers which are resting on the diaphragm muscle then the posterior surface or base base we can identify the pulmonary veins these are the pulmonary veins which are present at the base part of base part of the heart okay so then coming to the chambers already you have discussed about this two atria and two ventricles you please write down these things okay so the surfaces of heart anterior surface then we can identify inferior surface posterior surface of the base then we can identify the four chambers two atria and two ventricles right atria left atria right ventricle and left ventricle okay so here we can identify the interior of the heart interior of the heart then the atria what we can identify in the atria already have discussed about it so thin walled one is superior vena cava opening inferior vena cava opening another vein which is opening into it is called as coronary sinus okay what is coronary sinus i will explain you okay the heart chambers so this is the interior of the right atria so these are the points you have to mention when they asked about the interior of the atria okay so then coming to this ventricles what is a ventricle ventricular valves ventricle valves especially left ventricle was wall is thicker than the right ventricle wall can you find this so left ventricle is thicker it is very big and right ventricle is thinner okay so when you take a section of the heart you can identify this one then the blood vessels so what is the blood supply of heart now you will get a confusion what is the blood supply blood supply of heart so try to understand this blood supply of heart when you see look at the engine bike engine or motorcycle engine it takes the engine oil and then that engine oil will be circulated to every part of the it every every part of the bike tools instruments bike uh, spare parts and also it pumps the oil to its own instruments own tools why because for its free functioning for its free function in the same way heart also pumps the blood oxygen blood to every part of the body and also it pumps the blood to its own muscles okay so what is the muscle of the heart myocardium so for the functioning of the myocardium it needs blood supply right so the blood is reached to the myocardium by the iota and its branches iota iota means which is bringing the oxygen blood from the left ventricle from the left ventricle just wait for a while so that is about the that is how the blood is supplying to its own muscles own muscle that is called as myocardium okay let us see that how the myocardium it is getting the blood supply so coronary arteries coronary arteries are the vessels try to observe here coronary arteries are the vessels which supply the blood to the surface of the heart they are the branches of ascending aorta which lie in the sub epicardial tissue the coronary arteries arises from the aortic sinus each remember aorta is giving branches that branches first branches are this coronary arteries coronary arteries let me show you this so here we can identify the iota from that iota we can identify the coronary arteries which are arising and then these are the branches of the iota okay they are coming downwards and supplying to its own muscles one is right coronary artery left coronary artery so right coronary artery and its branches supplies to the right atria and this chamber is right ventricle 
okay left corner of the artery supplies to the left atria and the left ventricle okay that is about the right coronary artery and left coronary artery so here we can identify clearly how the right and left coronary arteries they are supplying to the heart these are the branches of the right coronary artery no need to remember the branches of it we just remember the blood vessels which are supplying to the heart they are nothing but coronary arteries so this type of circulation is called as coronary circulation coronary circulation so we have seen three types of circulation okay one is pulmonary circulation then systemic circulation the third one is coronary circulation okay so these are the branches of the right coronary artery and uh, where they are supplying and all okay this is not necessary just remember about it so how the right coronary artery is arising from the aorta and supplying to the right atria and the right ventricle okay and posteriorly what happens to this right coronary artery is it runs posteriorly it runs posteriorly and then it is going to anastomose anastomose with the opposite coronary artery right left coronary artery i will explain you what is anastomosis you don't worry about it okay this is the left coronary artery which is coming from the aortic sinus same aorta only and how this is how it is supplying to the left atria and the left ventricles okay so coronary arteries are the vas vesorum vasa vesorum of the ascending aorta means blood vessels supplying to the blood vessels okay then anatomically they are not end arteries but functionally they are end arteries okay so that is about the right and left coronary arteries right then this is the, these are the branches of left coronary artery circumflex diagonal coronal atrial branches okay so let me show you clearly the branches how the branches other branches which are coming from the aorta so other branches which are coming from aorta they are supplying to the all parts of the body excuse me yes so we have seen the heart and its chambers and the blood vessels of the heart okay now let us let me explain you about what are the vessels what are the vessels so we have seen arteries coronary arteries so arteries veins and capillaries okay we have seen the heart now now we are going to see the how the oxygenated blood reaching to the heart and then uh, deoxygenated blood reaching to the heart then from here heart to the lungs it is passing then from the heart oxygen blood see try to see the blue color one which is showing the carbon dioxide blood it is reaching to the lungs then from the lungs the oxygen blood this red color one reaching to the left atria left ventricle and then through this aorta it is coming outside and reaching to the all parts of the body so when it is reaching to the all parts of the body that is called as systemic circulation when the carbon dioxide blood reaches to the lungs and oxygen blood coming outside and reaches to the heart that type of circulation is called as pulmonary circulation when it is supplying to its own muscle nature through the coronary arteries that is called as coronary circulation remember three circulations pulmonary coronary and systemic circulation now coming to this arteries what are these arteries these are distributing channels distributing channels which carry oxygen blood away from the heart they branch like trees on their way to different parts of the body okay the large arteries are rich in elastic tissue but as branching progresses there is smooth muscle in their veins okay remember these are the vessels which bringing oxygen blood from the heart to all parts of the body that is the main thing you remember then coming to the veins these are called as draining channels draining channels remember draining so when you see the drainage it is taking all the waste water from all the houses and reaches to the canals the small canals they joins with each other and forms the medium size canal and medium size canal they joins with each other and form the big canal in the same way the veins they are draining channels they, they are draining channels from all tissues of the body the carbon dioxide blood is taken by this veins okay the small veins they joins with each other and forms the medium size and medium size veins they joins with each other and form big veins so here we can identify the big size large veins or vena cava where you have seen the vena cava superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava which are bringing the carbon dioxide blood from all tissues of the body and it is draining into right atrium of the heart okay so that is about veins 
what about these capillaries capillaries these are the networks of microscopic vessels they are very small vessels okay they connect the arterioles and venules they connect arterioles and the venules okay they are connecting both arteries and the veins means artery is going to divide into uh, medium size medium size is going to divide into small size small size divides into arterioles okay then venules are totally opposite so from the tissue from the tissue any tissue either it may be muscle either it may be bone anything from that small vessels which are present in that vessels the carbon dioxide blood is entering that vessels are called as venules so junction between these artery arterioles and the venules what we can identify capillaries we can identify they come in intimate contact with the tissues for a free exchange of nutrients and metabolites across their walls between the blood and the tissue frame now let me explain you what is this what the only the arteries they are bringing only oxygen blood not only oxygen blood they are also bringing the nutrients nutrients okay vitamins all the nutrients they are brought to the tissue by the arteries so the nutrients will be reaching to the all tissues from the tissues the carbon dioxide blood enters into the venules okay so between the artery arterioles and the venules this capillary is present okay let me show you that uh, how the venule uh, capillary is also present so before that this is the types of circulation systemic pulmonary and also the portal circulation let me explain you what is a portal circulation coronary circulation you have seen and the portal circulation let me explain you this portal circulation so this systemic already i have shown you in the diagram so from the left atrium the oxygenated blood reaches to the left ventricle which pumps the blood to all the remotest capillaries through the iota and its branches okay all tissues they are getting the oxygen blood that circulation is called as systemic whereas coming to the pulmonary circulation right atrium receives the venous blood from the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava and from the coronary sinus and conveys it into right ventricle from the right ventricle it enters into the lungs so here in this image try to observe carefully observe carefully right atrium right ventricle left atrium left ventricle so here we can identify the veins are bringing the deoxygen blood and enters into the right atrium and then it enters into the right ventricle then what happens this is systemic circulation and from right ventricle it enters into the lungs yes here you can identify so from the right ventricle it is reaching to the lungs it is reaching to the lungs okay it is reaching to the lungs this is a lung in this square box it is showing the lung and then from the lungs the oxygen blood reaches to the left atrium left atrium to the left ventricle and then from the left ventricle it is reaching to the all tissues all tissues that is called as systemic circulation and this is called as pulmonary circulation then other portal circulation what is all about this portal circulation is so when the oxygen blood reaches to the all tissues of the body all abdominal organs then all the organs the venous blood the venous blood remember carefully venous blood from the stomach venous blood from the intestines and venous blood from the pancreas all, from all these different parts the venous blood is reaching to the liver is reaching to the liver by the help of this portal vein okay portal vein it is bringing the deoxygen deoxygen blood means carbon dioxide blood but rich in nutrients vitamins proteins all the nutrients are rich they are present in the carbon dioxide blood from the spleen from the pancreas from the stomach and from the intestine and it is reaching to the liver by the help of portal vein okay why it is taking to the liver liver it is also called as storage storage okay all the nutrients will be stored in the liver stored in the liver so glucose whatever you take glucose whatever you take the nutrients they are stored in the liver whenever you need energy energy then the, all the nutrients will break down that biochemistry you will study glycogenolysis glucose is going to stored in the liver in the form of glycogen and then glycogen it is going to break down means break down into the glucose and release the energy then energy is reached to the every part of the body that is called as portal circulation okay systemic pulmonary then coronary 
and portal circulation okay four types you remember then coming to this yeah here same thing we are seeing the image right then portal circulation what i explained about this uh, systemic circulation which has following characters blood passes through the two sets of capillaries before draining into the systemic veins veins drains the first capillary network known as the portal vein which branches like an artery to form second set of capillaries you don't you don't need to worry about these things you just remember the portal vein brings the carbon dioxide blood to the liver for the storage of nutrients again from the liver from the liver the carbon dioxide blood enters into inferior vena cava okay that is about the portal vein then coming to the classification of blood vessels so the artery the main arteries they are going to divides into arterioles then capillaries the junction between arterioles and the venules then sinusoids very small spaces okay then they opens into the venules okay let me show you what is arteries the characteristic feature of arteries are thick wall thick wall being uniformly thicker than accompanying veins this of thick wall let me show you this so here you can identify artery and the vein this is a thick wall and this is a thin wall so the artery it is composed of elastic fibers okay big arteries that's why they are called as elastic arteries then here you can identify the types of arteries and the structure large arteries they are aorta pulmonary artery these are all the large arteries okay they divides into medium size medium size arteries and then small size arteries so medium size arteries are called as muscular arteries small size arteries they are going to enter into the muscle these are called as smallest small arteries so very small muscles they are supplied by the smallest arteries remember as the tree having branches in the same way artery also having branches the terminal branch small branch they are called as smallest arteries arterioles okay then coming to the next part so blood supply of the arteries what i told you the large arteries that are supplied by the blood vessels for the functioning of the for the functioning of the blood vessels it also needs the blood supply so some small blood vessels which are supplying to the blood vessels they are called as vasa vesorum vasa vesorum here you can identify in this image we can identify small blood vessels in the wall of artery they are called as vasa vesorum okay so that is about the vasa vesorum then coming to the nerve supply of the arteries the nerve supply an artery called as nervi vascularis these nerves are mostly non myelinated sympathetic fibers uh, which are vasoconstriction in function uh, a few fibers are myelinated are believed to be sensory to the outer and inner core so in the previous class when we were discussing about sympathetic supply sympathetic so what we have discussed so sympathetic fibers sympathetic fibers they supplies to the blood vessels also pseudomotor vasomotor and the pyromotor vasomotor means they supplies to the vessels so here we can get this blood vessels they are also supplied by the nerves okay so that is about the blood vessels then capillaries these are very smallest way the smallest vessels they are networks of the microscopic endothelial tubes interposed between materials and the venules the true capillaries begin after the transition zone of 50 to 100 microns beyond the precapillary sphincter remember these are the very small minute vessels which are connecting the arterioles and the venules okay that is about capillaries then coming to this uh, yes these are the ca capillary structure this is not necessary for you okay then coming to the other structures veins 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 or veins how does the veins form small venules they joins with each other and form small veins veins they joins with each other and form medium size veins medium size veins they joins with each other and form large veins so this is the structure of the veins and the venules okay this is the structure of vein so what we can identify in the vein we can identify the valves are present in the vein okay valves as you see the valve in the cycle tube or your bike wheel tube in the same way here also we are having the valve what is the function of the valve it does not allow the backflow of the blood it does not allow the backflow of the blood okay that is about the veins so communication between arteries and the veins that is called as 
anastomosis communication between arteries and the veins called as anastomosis i will just explain you and i will show you this coming to the anastomosis of blood vessels definition is a pre capillary and post capillary communication between neighboring vessels it may be arteries or it may be veins okay that communication is called as anastomosis circulation through anastomosis is called as collateral circulation collateral circulation the parts or types of uh, anastomosis one is arterial anastomosis it is a communication between arteries or branches of the arteries okay that is about one type then we can identify the venule anastomosis so other parts yeah here you can see that venous anastomosis it is a communication between the veins or tributaries of the veins okay then arterio venous anastomosis means it is a communication between artery and the vein okay so that is about the types of anastomosis okay so i think you got some idea on the circulatory system okay rest of the things we'll discuss later okay so the circulatory system you need to write the types of circulation then if they ask about heart you try to mention the chambers of the heart if they ask about any particular chamber you just mention what are the openings of the right uh, what are the openings of the particular chamber suppose if they ask about right atrium and the openings of the right atrium you need to mention the openings are superior vena cava yes superior vena cava inferior vena cava then coronary sinus okay so yes let me show you this this bear with me yeah, here you can see that so if most of the times they ask about interior of the right atrium inter interior of the left atrium like that they may ask so when they ask about the openings of the right atrium you have to mention the superior vena cava opening inferior vena cava opening coronary sinus opening coronary sinus is the vein vein which is bringing the carbon dioxide blood from the heart muscle what is the heart muscle called as myocardium from the myocardium the venous blood enters in drained by this coronary sinus okay and then they opens into right atrium of the heart then what is the what are the openings of right ventricle we can identify uh, right atrial opening and then you can identify pulmonary opening pulmonary opening so here we can identify the pulmonary trunk it is having a valve called as semi lunar valve semi lunar valve then left atrial opening left atrium what are the left atrium openings the two pairs of pulmonary veins pulmonary veins right and left pulmonary veins they open into left atrium and then left ventricle opening one is left atrial opening then you can identify aortic opening aortic opening so other things what we can identify are so the valves valves what are the valves between the right atrium and the right ventricle we can identify right atrioventricular valve it is also called as tricuspid valve between left atrium and the left ventricle we can identify another valve called as left atrioventricular valve it is also called as bicuspid valve or mitral valve okay then esophage sorry inferior vena cava inferior vena cava it is guarded by a valve it is guarded by a valve called as eustachian valve eustachian valve and pulmonary trunk it is guarded by a valve called as semi lunar valve aortic aortic open opening also we can identify semi lunar valve two semi lunar valves aortic and the pulmonary valves then right atrium and the right ventricle right atrioventricular or tricuspid between left atrium and the left ventricle bicuspid valve okay that is about the valves of the heart so that is the end of the circulatory system if you have any doubt please contact me freely and you can ask me i will clarify your doubts Thank you friends see you soon